we want employees to realize that this is part of their job too. Like taking care of yourself, stepping away for 10 minutes to take a breather, to take a walk, it, like do it <laughs> because that's part of your job. Good morning. It's great to be with you once again. And Fran Dean Bishop here. And I'm super excited to welcome on Alex Hashin of Burn Along. Alex is doing some fantastic things in the fitness and wellness space for corporations. So um, let's get to the conversation. Alex, welcome. Thank you so much, Fran. It's good to, good to be here and always excited to chat a little well-being with you. Absolutely. So for our audience who may not be familiar with Burn Along, even though you're a little bit of anywhere and everywhere. Can you tell them a little bit about you and about Burn Along and what their platform represents? Yeah, for sure. So um, Burn Along is a virtual platform, as there are many of them these days. And well-being, uh, as you know, is a very vague term, right? It encompasses everything from fresh fruit in the office through to massage chairs. So we're on the, the virtual side of things with video content, uh, supporting employees with exercise, nutrition, stress management, financial well-being. Uh, actionable steps that they can take. Um, but most importantly, um, our focus is one of diversity and inclusion. So we're trying to show individuals, instructors that relate to them, categories that relate to them, and try and get away from, you know, the images of perfection that the industry has, you know, pushed upon us all the last 20 or so years. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. You, you're touching a lot of really hot buttons. I think that are really important to corporate stakeholders these days and to their customers as well. Um, I just came back from a, a two really solid conferences that focused on, you know, CEOs really getting it right when mm -hmm. it comes to understanding what their consumers and their clients and, and stakeholders and, and their employees, which are driving the conversation these days, are really important to them at heart of it. So let's jump into that because I think that you you bring up a really good point around the DEI space and. It's interesting, right? I have a lot of friends that work in DEI. I am not a DEI expert, even though I'm a person of color. Uh, but one thing is for sure that it's a hot topic and it is very important that um, customers really understand and corporations really understand at the heart of it what that really means and yeah. have the best foot forward, right? It doesn't touch fitness and wellness a lot uh, until it does, right? Right. And so we see, you know, we have obviously very diverse offerings that are out there now. When I started in fitness in 94, um, you know, there were maybe five different types of platforms around fitness, whether I think back then we did slide and step and, you know, we did like the high low, you know, it was, and then you look at it today and it's probably, probably close to, I was looking at um, a publication, industry publication the other day, Alex, I think it's close to 300 different types of offerings in the space. So our offerings in fitness and wellness are very diversified. But even beyond that, the players back then in the 90s, you know, I could count the players maybe on a calendar. Maybe there's like 100 players now. I think there's thousands of players in our space. Yeah. So as for you as a provider in the space, and you, especially when you think about the customers that you're serving, what comes to mind in terms of the importance of DEI and how do you approach that conversation in your offerings and how you develop products. Yeah, I think, well, first of all, I'll preface it. I am not a DEI expert either, um, but just having, you know, some personal training background experience myself and, and kind of seeing the limited offerings that were in the past, there's two ways to really look at it. Number one is from the individual and number two is from the organization and how does DEI kind of um, integrate with well-being? Well, from the individual side, it makes perfect sense, right? Like you are so much more likely to create a habit and want to continue with the habit and be excited about learning from somebody that you can relate to. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the well-being industry looks like me, you know, it's uh, 20, 30 year old uh, white people in good shape in LA studios. And that's not representative of the nation. And one of the cool pieces of feedback that we always get from burn along. It's like, you know, I've found an instructor that I can relate to and that resonates with me by my age or by my race or by my abilities in some cases. So I think, or I know, you know, providing those types of experiences and, and showing people that they can too now be involved in this conversation. It's not segmented for a certain kind of body or, you know, uh, how somebody looks. So 
from the individual side, it's all about just making them feel comfortable. Um, and I think that's a, a big no brainer from the organization side. Every company has a DEI um, statement on their website. It's important. Or they should. Or they, or they should. should. Yes. Good point, Brian. <laughs> good point. Um, so progressive companies do, right? It's something that they like to promote and, and put in the forefront. Well, why wouldn't all of your programs reflect the goals of that statement? And this is, again, something that is a, an oversight because a lot of times, you know, well-being is just that take it off the shelf, plug it in kind of thing. And they don't look a little bit deeper into how does this impact the individuals within the organization? How are they going to perceive it? Um, and that's something that we're, you know, very proud to to bring uh, to these people's attention is that, you know, with a program like Burn Along that's highlighting diversity, um, now all of your kind of aspirations in that regard are, are being reflected through this program. Fantastic. I love that. I love that. You know, what, when you sit down with a client, you know, you're probably be very similar to us, you know, being in, in terms of the engagement, right. And just in terms of trying to understand, you know, what are your challenges? What are the biggest complexities that you're finding with your workforce? How are you trying to work through those? What does that look like? What are you noticing from a trend perspective that's coming up with so much that we have, with, you know, great resignation, quiet quitting, you know, the, the, the mass, um, uh, reorganization that employees are going through now. What are you finding are the hot buttons for your clients with regards to tackling this issue of well-being and the importance of it and, and continuing to keep it in the fore, right? Because I'm sure you're like me. People get excited about it. You know, we're coming yeah. upon the first of the year. They're going to get real excited for about 12 yeah. weeks, maybe yeah. six. And then it's no longer an imperative or it's no longer, you know, it kind of gets pushed down, 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 down. And it's it's really changed because, again, when I started in the 90s, it was the last thing of the last thing that was an imperative, right? But yeah. now it's, a, you know, we're higher on the rung. People have showcased the importance of it. But what are some of the challenges that you're seeing and, and some of the trends that you're seeing, especially when it comes to corporate, you know, well-being? I've only been uh, in this space with Burn Along for about four years, you know, having come directly from personal training. Um, and let me tell you, like, in even in the last four years, I've seen a dramatic shift in the way that well-being is perceived. You know, it was pre-COVID, a lot of it was a nice to have, right? It was something that like, oh, if we have the budget, we'll put it on the benefits page and like, it's there. But now a lot of like our more progressive clients and, and a lot of the clients that we're signing today are looking at it from an, a larger benefit strategy. And they're thinking about, okay, how can we actually integrate well-being into the other things that we do so that we actually see some results? And I know, Fran, in the past, like it was all about like, oh, uh, there's no ROI in, in wellness and it's so hard to prove. And <laughs> I know you're shaking your head because it's like- yep. That's, that's all point, they, that's all. like, <laughs> you know, that it, eventually it will. Um, but now we're looking at different types of return and the return can be in uh, retention. It can be in attraction of employees and just kind of the overall culture and promoting well-being is a means of showing people that you actually like appreciate them and that you want them to be healthier. And, uh, we, we had a, a small government client in Maryland, had an amazing way of, of presenting it to me that I never really thought of before. She was like, we just want to normalize well-being. We want employees to realize that this is part of their job too. Like taking care of yourself, stepping away for 10 minutes to take a breather, to take a walk, it, like do it <laughs> because that's part of your job. And I was like, wow, it's such a refreshing way to look at it. And um, so many companies are, are thinking about it in that respect now, too. They're bringing in different resource groups. They're bringing in different departments within, you know, benefits and human resources to look at well-being from a different perspective and figure out how can we leverage this to achieve our goals uh, and, you know, make the overall kind of package and approach more effective for everyone. Yeah, I love that. You, you touched on a couple of things that that I'm certainly seeing in terms of trends is that the integration of the way the leaders in various departments, like back in the day, everybody worked in a silo and mm -hmm. then COVID hit and all of a yeah. sudden, oh, we have to talk to each other. And if we don't talk to each other today, we may not have a company tomorrow. So yeah, 
forget that silo nonsense. We're all in this together, right? We're all stuck together. And now, even though we're back out and we're traveling and we're doing things, I do think that the mind, uh, the mind melt has shifted and that people are recognizing that the integration is important. And, you know, one of the things we're seeing is that, you know, they're even bringing well-being into the, you know, the ESG component, right? So environmental, social governance, the way mm-hmm. they govern, the way they think about environment, the footprint of that, that it has to touch um, so many different areas of the organization. It's not just, you know, well-being in his own place. And if companies are still doing that, those are the ones that are going to be left behind, right? Because right. now it is a, a mission imperative that you state in your policies and in your governance, this is how we are measuring that from a social standpoint, from a governance standpoint, and particularly environmental, right? The, people are coming back into workspaces that have to be safe. They have yeah. to be healthy. They have to be cleanly. So now it's not well-being in our silo, which is great for us, right? Uh, but it, it's it's how do we make this part of the, the bigger, broader conversation? And how do I work with this business unit to be able to make that happen? Yeah, no, I, I love that. I think it kind of parallels even like an individual's journey, right? Like where people get caught up in like a particular goal around their well-being and that uh, I want to lose weight or I want to accomplish this type of athletic event. And when they start to step outside of that individual or that particular goal and look at it from a holistic approach of like, oh no, if I take care of myself, it's going to make me live longer and my quality of life is going to be better. My relationships will be better. Then you start like seeing real change. So like that is, um, it's such an interesting, like to scale version on a corporate level, when we step outside of that silo and, and look at impacting the entire organization, how, you know, and a real impact is tangible and can happen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are you excited about? You know, we're, we're driving into that end of year period. And, and for us in the fitness health wellness world, that's a, that's a big time for us, you know, mm-hmm. you start to see the promotions as soon as it's, it's always interesting to me. Right. So, so I'm, I'm not a, a celebrant of the holidays at all. Um, but it's always interesting. I always have downtime and quiet time near the end of the year. And, you know, I just start flipping the channels and watching the commercials. And it's so interesting how the, the ball drops, you know, <laughs> everybody's, ah, you know, in pandemonium. And then as soon as 1201, you start to see planet fitness, I know. <laughs> Gold's gym, probably <laughs> run along advertisements everywhere. Everybody's super excited about weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. So what are you excited about, you know, as we start to end the year and going into 2023 and and some, I guess some of the, the things that you guys are, are working on over there, run along. Yeah. Well, it's like the new year is it's the ultimate Monday, right? Like the diet starts Monday or the exercise starts Monday. <laughs> good. Like I like that. Like, I'm going to steal like, that. The ultimate <laughs> yeah, Monday. <laughs> it's the big Monday. And you know, you're right. Like it is, there is a lot of people that kind of jump into it and unfortunately unprepared. And then six weeks later they have dropped off. But I, I always get excited about um, new years. And when I was, you know, personal training in the gym, like some of the, the old, like McCrudgeons would be like, Oh, it, it gets so full on January 1st. And the, but I'm like, yeah, but that's amazing. Like this is more people coming in And even though a lot of them don't follow through uh, at the end of February, there's some that do. And like every year, some people actually get it to stick that year. So like, if nothing else, like the big Monday does inspire some people to make that change for themselves. Um, What we like to do at Burn Along is actually try and emphasize December um, leading into January 1st with our clients, because yes, Everyone is excited and ready to make that change. However, if they're not prepared weeks in advance, we do see kind of that exciting and then that drop. So it's like, how can we, like for current clients, for instance, how can we really make sure they know about this offering? How can we make sure that they're aware of everything that it brings to the table and how to use it? What kind of things are we promoting? You know, leading into December, the holidays are exciting and, and full of amazing things for a lot of people, but it's also extremely stressful for other people. You know, we see people uh, saying that all the time that um, they're stressed out, they're, they're nervous about going to parties because they know that they're going to be met with foods that they don't want to eat and things like this. So can we give them the tools to 
approach that stuff with confidence, you know, get in there and have a good time. And then when it comes time to have January 1st and they're ready to start X, Y, and Z, they've already built some momentum leading into it. Um, so I'm, I'm always very excited to, you know, help people extend the timeline a little bit so that when the, the start line of the big Monday hits, they're already running and they're already feeling really good. That's exciting. You're bringing back my, my, my old juices. Um, you're making me think about, you know, I, I remember being, you know, a trainer back in the day and just, you know, you do get excited for your clients because they tell you about some of the things that they're struggling with and yep. the things that they want to, to, to work on and, you know, personal struggles. And when they get that triumph or they're able to overcome, it's, it's like everything, right? It's like you get, you're, it's like you're in the, in the celebration with them. It feels so, yep. so good. And I don't get, you know, I don't touch in my, in the work, you know, the, the role that I have these days, I don't, I don't touch the micro level as much. I'm more on the macro level, but I, as you were speaking, I so remember that it's just, it's wonderful because sometimes people struggle so hard um, and, and their challenges are so deep. And so often it's, it's, it's psychological, right? It's emotional, it's mental, it's all the other stuff, the physical piece and the physical well-being is just one small component yeah. of it. And I think that's a good segue into mental health that I'd like to talk about because uh, we're later this week, we're interviewing um, <clears throat> an Olympian who has a mental health foundation. So stay tuned, folks, stay tuned. Uh, yeah. But so often, I think organizations and in general, people look at physical health as a, in a silo as well, mm -hmm. right? It was a one-off and don't realize that it so attributes to your mental well-being. If you're not physically active, the endorphins aren't going, the dopamine isn't produced, the blood isn't flowing. But once a person is, and they just have those micro movements and micro shifts in their life, they start to have these other big awarenesses or happenings and things that happen. So can you talk a little bit about how Burn Along is supporting um, individuals, companies, employees, you know, people everywhere around the mental health component of wellness? Yeah, I mean, the, the mental health has been one of the biggest requests and and statements that, that of challenge that people are having. And, you know, obviously that was exacerbated through COVID. Um, but even, even now, I think people are more comfortable talking about it, you know, yeah, yeah. bringing it up. Um, there's still a huge stigma around it. And I don't think that's going anywhere uh, anytime soon. But it is nice to see that companies are recognizing that their people are stressed out and that they're a little nervous that that stress might make them leave. And I think that's that's a healthy fear to have, right? Like if I, I don't want my employees to feel this way, I don't want them to leave. What can I do about it? You know, how can I step in and give them some sort of resource? Um, so Burn Along approaches it, you know, through a bunch of different lenses because mental health, mental health in, it, in and of itself is very multifaceted, right? There's like a clinical approach to depression and anxiety. There's mindfulness where we're looking at things from a different perspective. There's like the active participation of guided meditations, like, and, and what's right for one person is not right for the other. So again, like coming back to that diversity aspect, we're trying to show different ways of looking at one topic as well. So that when people come into it, they're not met with what they had in their, their mind previously, you know, like, Oh, the mental health is I have to sit on top of a mountain and fold my legs and meditate. Oh. No. Yeah, yes. I mean, <laughs> that might work for you because that, that was excellent. Uh, but it's, it can just be a frank conversation about, you know, stress reduction or whatever it may be. So it's something that we, you know, try to prioritize every month, not just, uh, I think in, in March is mental health awareness or it's a big piece of it. And like I said, we have four big pillars uh, and mental health and stress reduction is absolutely one of them. And what are your four pillars just for our audience, um, uh, Alex? Yeah, they're, they're the similar holistic ones that most companies focus on. It's the physical, the nutritional, um, the stress management, emotional side, and then financial well-being. Okay. Okay. Very good. So what keeps you up at night? You know, when you, we think about turning the page, we're, again, we're turning, getting ready to, I can't believe we're getting ready to go into 2023. It seems like we just got to 20. I don't know about you, but it's like, okay, as the older I get, it's like, okay, slow down. Can we slow down on the time? It's like, we're moving yeah. so quick, but 
you know, what keeps you up at night? You're obviously a leader in the space, right? And you're with an organization that's really trying to champion fitness, well-being, you know, financial stress, all of that, you know, um, and the reduction of that, you know, what is it that's really driving you, driving a greater purpose in the space of of well-being and health? And, and what keeps you up at night around that? For me, it, it comes back to, you know, having worked one-on-one with clients and like, you know, when you become a quote unquote expert in some sort of, you know, well-being space, like people come to you with questions. I'm sure you get questions. Just, Cocktail party. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Starbucks. What do you think about this? <laughs> or I'm doing this. Or Hair salon. Um, it's like, oh, you do that. Can you help me with? Yeah. Yes. I remember those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's great. Like I, I love when people ask me questions because that means that they're curious and that they're open to making a change. The thing that really bothers me is that not enough people are asking the questions and that mm-hmm. education on these topics is so far below where it needs to be. And, you know, so many times you get, there's different levels to this, right? Especially with like nutrition, for instance, where we can debate the intricacies of carbohydrate timing if we'd like, but in reality, most people just need to learn what a carbohydrate is. And, you know, the understanding between um, cereal as a carbohydrate and a potato as a carbohydrate. And it, that's what's really frustrating to me is that this information is being taught to people for the first time when they're 40, 50 years old, and they've been told that they have diabetes or hypertension or something like this. And it's a lot, it's super overwhelming for them. So, you know, what I really love about what we get to do at Burn Along is we break it down, try and just make this as simple as possible as approachable as possible so that when they are met with a, you know, a scary situation or a topic that they seem confused about, they can find a five minute video that, you know, just kind of explains one piece of it. And one piece is all you need to change the trajectory of your life one degree, um, which ultimately can, you know, end up being a big change. So it's a big mission of mine is to simplify these topics for people um, because more people need it now more than ever, I'd say. I think you're you're right on point with where people need to be thinking. It's like in corporate America, they have something called learning snack bites, right? Mm-hmm. And I think fitness and wellness is the same, helping people, again, just get to the micro shift, make one small change, yeah. take, you know, one new habit on and just really hone that, you know, and I'm sure you get this question a lot, you know, what's the one thing I can do to really sh- shape my health or, or change my well-being or whatever, but it's micro. You yeah. know, it's not the big, you know, uh, again, athletes. I always think people are athletes. Everyone is an athlete. I don't care what you do. Everyone has an athlete inside. And Olympians don't become athletes overnight. It's little by little that, you know, they learn how to do one particular skill well, whether it's, you know, they're a sprinter or a pole vaulter or discus, a marathoner, you know, whatever the skill is. Now there's, somebody told me the other day, so I met, I was having a a conversation with a gentleman from Nike and now hip hop dance, break dancing is in the Olympics. I mean, it looks really hard. So (laughs) I say go for it. Let's just pause on that for a moment. (laughs) Hip hop has really become a global, just icon. The fact that break dancing is in the Olympics now, but to that point, my but my husband was a bebopper, right? He, I think that's right. He's probably going to say that's not the term, Fran. Okay, whatever. But um, <laughs> for break dancing, like it takes work, it takes skill. That's why it's in the Olympics, yeah. right? But you can't become a great b boy, b boy. That's what it is. B boy, yeah. Overnight, you know, you got to practice. You got to. It's little, little, little. So that's an athletic level of athleticism. The same with working out, getting fit. So if you're listening. You know, take to heart what Alex just said, that it's the small micro movements, it's the small micro shifts in whatever you're doing around your health. And again, little by little, those just become part of your habit and become part of your daily life. And I always like to think about, so um, my husband and I have an Airbnb here in DC, and we always have people from all over the world that come and stay. And I'm always just so enamored with um, folks who are come who are retired. Mm-hmm. you know, who are like in their seventies, but they're in the best shape 
ever. I love it. I love oh those my, people. Don't you love that? Like, <laughs> yeah, they're I like, love those people. Oh, no. They're, first thing in the morning, like six o'clock, we hear the door close and they're out for a walk. And yeah. you talk to them at the end of the day, like, oh, yeah, we walked all over the mile, all over the mall. And then we went over to Georgetown. And then we went down, you know, on on um, uh, uh, the uh, one of our trails that we have here. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, you walked 10, 12 miles. And they're like in the best shape of their life. I know. It's so great. By 70, that's because you've made micro shifts throughout your life yeah. that have added up. You can't do that overnight at 70. Give me a break, right? So everything you're saying is absolutely on point. You have to take it in small nuggets and then just kind of keep going with that. Yeah, but here's the problem is that we live in a world of instant gratification where you can get Amazon to deliver to your house literally the same day in some cases. And we've kind of been preconditioned to expect change instantly. And that's where, you know, a lot of people kind of get frustrated because they they have this vision or this goal of whatever they want to accomplish. They want to be that 70 year old next week. Yeah. You know, they don't want to have to lose the weight now and, and you know, increase their their um, cardiovascular output. And it's it's a shame. And, you know, one of the biggest things that I, I really like to stress with people is what you were saying, like the micro steps, the like the stepping stone goals to it, the things that you can check off every day that make you feel good and show that you're moving towards that goal. Because then six months later, you won't even realize how far you've come. Uh, but looking back, you'll you'll be so proud that like, oh, wow, I, I'm dramatically better than I was. Um so yeah, I would just stress that like so much. It was such a great point that, you know, find the things that you can do every day, whether it's 10 minute walk or, you know, make your lunch or five minute meditation break. Um, it won't feel like a lot Tuesday and Wednesday, but when you go to 2025 and you think about who you were in 2022, yeah. you might be like mind blown at how far you've come. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, Back in the day, again, when I started, not to date myself, but we would never have had a three minute or a five minute workout. Like that was like, give me a break. Why are you even trying yeah. it? But yeah. now on your platform and on our Blaze platform, Get them in. we have that, right? We have three minute workouts, five minute workouts, because if that's where you have to start and yeah. you just can't accomplish it or you're just not ready for it, then that's it's your place to start. So you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right on that. So as we wind up, this conversation, Alex, I'm wondering, is there any, are there any, you know, one or two nuggets that you would love to leave our listeners with in terms of, again, you know, again, who Burn Along is, what you guys are doing, how they can get a hold of you and mm -hmm. what they should be thinking about when they, when it comes to their health and well-being, whether it's in the workplace or in their home workplace, you know, what's, you know, those one or two nuggets to them with. I would say as it pertains to the individual and ultimately corporations, like number one is be patient with yourself. So like if you have a goal and you're motivated to make change, realize that it it is going to be a longer process and you're going to screw up a hundred times before you accomplish the thing that you're trying to do. Um, it's very rare that we see people go all in a hundred percent and make it to the finish line. You know, the, the old like tortoise and the hare thing, start out being the tortoise. Like just, just grind it out little by little for a few years even, yeah. and you're going to accomplish things. And if you're in the middle of your life right now, a couple of years right now could literally add a decade to the end of your life and a better quality end of your life. So look at it in that light um, and have some patience along the way because it, it is a process. Um, you don't have to do everything that you see on Instagram or online. It's <laughs> it's not real life. Um, so that would be like, you know, that's my biggest tip. And then the second one is to just pay more attention, you know, pay attention to how your body feels. If your lower back is hurting, maybe that's a sign to get up and walk around. If your stomach is upset, maybe pay attention to the thing that you just ate. That doesn't agree with you. If you feel like you're snapping at your kids more than you used to, find time to separate yourself and you know do some breathing. Um, but the more you stop and pause before you react and kind of just pay attention to the way you're interacting with the ones around you, um, the more likely you're going to be able to course correct quicker and make it to that end goal. Uh, as it pertains to burn along, 
Uh, burnalong.com is the best place to find information about us. B-U-R-N-A-L-O-N-G.com. Uh, you can get in touch with people there to, to learn more. And um, I really hope that, you know, our approach to diversity and inclusion, and uh, we include family again, that's another big one, is a trend that we start to see more companies take advantage of and even competition. Like there's no shortage of um, need for this kind of stuff. So I hope that these are, these are things that others pick up on as well. Yeah. That's very rich. Uh, Very, very rich. Thank you so much, Alex. I think that that really resonates, will resonate with a lot of people and help them think a little bit differently about themselves, their family, their, their work family, right? Because that's still your family as well. And those that you touch in the community throughout. Um, So thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on with us today. I think this has been a great conversation. And again, we'll leave our listeners a lot to think about as we approach the end of this year and going into the next. And for those of you who joined us today um, and may have joined us late again, I'm Fran Bishop of Arrow Bodies, Inc., and where we design strategic health and wellness engagements that help organizations thrive. You may be curious, why would we have on Burn Along, they're a direct competitor of AeroBodies and our AeroBodies Blaze platform. And that's because we want to help people everywhere. And, and depending on where you are, there's there's thousands of different offerings because everything, not one thing appeals to every person, right? So there's not one size fits all when it comes to fitness and well-being. So if Burn Along is, is a platform that can help you, please check them out. I think Alex and his team are doing fantastic work there. And if you want to learn more about The Optimized Workplace, feel free to join us at theoptimizedworkplace.com and always aerobodies.com for more about our company and how we can help you in your workplace. Thank you all and have a fantastic day.